This video is entitled AOA or Activity on Arrow Network Diagrams and goes along with Chapter 5 of the Project Management for Technology course. I'm Dr. James Renault and I'll be taking you through this, this video. In this video, we will discuss drawing activity on arrow network diagrams. There are two types of general network diagrams, activity on node and activity on arrow. And we will also be talking about finding and marking the critical path of the network diagram on your activity on arrow or AOA diagram once you've got it drawn. Activity on arrow diagrams, network diagrams, are different than activity on node diagrams in the way that uh, where the activity is actually designated in the diagram. In an AON diagram, the node itself, the circle or the box, contain the activity. The activity was done there. In an AOA diagram, activity on arrow diagram, the activity happens on the arrow and the nodes are just places to wait until all of the arrows arrive. You can take off on the arrows going on the, the next activity arrows. So each task is on an arrow. The nodes are nothing but connectors. And you can think of a node or a, a, a connector as a state where all of the activities have, have finished and are waiting, and you're waiting for activities to complete before you go on to the next, next activity or group of activities. You may need to add a dummy arrow or an activity with zero duration or with, with no job, but call it dummy, just to fully describe the flow. And uh, in an AOA diagram, there will be a clear start node and a clear end node, and it should be marked so the arrows all go from a node to a node. Here we can see a simple AOA diagram. You can see that the tasks lettered A through E are represented by the arrow. So the first node over here on the, the far end represents the start. This node represents the terminus node, the end. And these nodes each represent a state throughout the, throughout the network diagram. For instance, this node, the, the node over here, would represent when A is complete. Um, the node up there, there would, would represent the node where C is complete. And this node would represent when B and D are complete. So if we're here at this node, B and D have arrived, and we're, we're now going to start the activity E. You can see how this diagram differs from the activity on node diagram, the AON diagram. But you will see these in industry, and you will see people use these and draw these. So these diagrams were drawn using a program called Draw.io, and you can go to Draw.io in your web browser and uh, use the online version, or you can download an installable that will run on your uh, on your personal device, either Windows, Mac, or or Linux, um, if, or Chromebook even. So, uh, if you don't want to install it, use the use online version. With Draw.io, you grab the nodes over here in the toolbox, and I got the little circles here from the little circle there in general. Um, I defined the type of arrow up here on the toolbar as a straight arrow. I then just drew the nodes, connected them with the arrows, and then double-clicked on the arrow to be able to enter the text so that the text stays on the arrow and the text is associated with the arrow. Draw.io is a program that, that you'll be using in this class a lot, and you'll become very comfortable with it. Here is another AON diagram, and you can see that I need a dummy. And let's let's describe why I needed to add an arrow just to make just to make this make sense. For instance, this node, this bottom node here, is the node that represents when B is finished, and this top node up here represents when A is finished. So we use the dummy to connect the B finish node, the, the node where B finishes, back up to the node where A finishes, so that that top node 
actually represents the, the condition of A and B being complete. And the reason why we couldn't combine just B over to the same node as A is because you can see that D is dependent upon B alone, but C is dependent upon A and B. And to model this, we needed to add the dummy, the dummy activity or the dummy arrow to make this AOA diagram really represent the network as described above in the problem. Here in this diagram, I represent the task name and I pressed enter and entered the duration of the task directly under directly under the node name. You could say a space three, but I, I like it with the activity duration underneath the, the activity name. And I'm using round arrows because, or, or curved arrows, just because it makes the, it, it arranges these a little easier to, to be able to see because both D and D move from the state of, of this node down here where C ends and they both go to this state here where F begins. So we would have to, to, to make them curve or, or zigzag or something. So there would be this network represented by AOA diagram. So I'm taking the same diagram as the, that I had in the last slide. And on this slide, I've marked the critical path. With an AOA diagram, it's very easy to see the three paths that are available through this diagram just by following the arrows. We can go from one end to the other by ABF. ACDF or ACEF, you can see there are three possible paths. And with an AOA diagram, it's very easy to see those paths because the arrows represent the activities. The durations, if we add the durations up on the three various paths, we can see that the path ABF is 13 units long, the path ACDF are 12 units long, and the path ACEF is 11 units long. This tells us that the critical path, the path that if there's a lengthening of a task, the whole project will get lengthened, is called a, is ABF for 13. So I uh, click on each of the arrows and in draw IO on the right hand side, you will see a, uh, a drop down that will let you choose the width of the line, and by making the line uh, thicker than one, we get that nice big fat arrow showing us where the critical path is flowing through this diagram. This concludes this presentation on AOA diagrams, network diagrams. I'd like to say thank you. Remember that this presentation is copyright 2020 by James Imreno, PhD. You can contact me at jreno at shawnee.edu if you have any questions. This work is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial share alike, 4.0 international license, and I would like to say thank you very much for watching.